In the last part of this series, I bought this 2015 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro for just over $300. The goal was to see if I can buy a decent MacBook without getting scammed in just 10 minutes looking on eBay. And I think honestly, it went pretty well. This thing has turned out to be a pretty solid laptop. But today we're gonna take things up a notch by putting to the test some of the most common upgrades that people will do to a MacBook that they've recently bought. So join me, cause I think this will be an interesting experiment. Today's video is sponsored by Wondershare PDF Element. PDF Element is a fast, affordable, and easy PDF solution to manage PDF documents across desktop, mobile, and web. PDF Element lets you create, edit, convert, annotate, sign, combine, and compress PDFs, and so much more. It's, it's too many features to list, really. Now, if you're like me and you wanna create a petition for Apple to bring back a 15 inch MacBook, you can create text fields, a clean layout and signature lines super duper easily all within the PDF. Plus, once I send you the PDF, you'll be able to extract text data even in a non-rich PDF document, such as this scan of a title page from a book printed in 1762. Just click the OCR button and PDF element will find the text in your documents. To learn more about Wondershare PDF Element, check out the link in the description below. And now let's head back to the video. Okay, so let's get into it. And the first thing that I would recommend when you buy a used MacBook before you do anything else is to do a fresh installation of the newest version of macOS that it can run. Now there's a couple of reasons that I think you should do this. Number one, if someone sends you a machine that is already set up, that can be a bit of a red flag. This machine actually had that, and basically you don't want someone else's data or other programs that someone else might have installed on your system. So it's always a good idea to just go into recovery, wipe the drive, and do a fresh installation. Now, it is also a common misconception that installing a newer version of macOS than whatever version you have in your head might make your machine slower. That is basically a myth. That may have been true back in the 2000s when people would complain about Vista tanking their performance on their Windows XP machines, but in the past 10 years or so, especially with Macs, Mac OS is pretty lightweight and you're not really gonna notice anything slower. So I would just put it on the latest version and forget about it. So obviously I've gone ahead and done that on this machine. And from that point, for most people, you're probably good to go, but there are a couple of other things that people really like to do, especially with these machines. The big two, are an SSD upgrade and reapplying different thermal paste. So in today's video, that's what we're going to focus on. How big of a difference is newer, faster storage and a fresh application of thermal paste going to make to a MacBook like this? And well, the best way to get to the bottom of that would be to perform upgrades on this machine and have a direct comparison to an identical machine that has a stock system. But too bad I don't have two identical 2015 15 inch MacBooks lying around. Oh wait, of course I do. So channel sponsor iFixit is now selling these crucial upgrade kits for your Mac. I've gone for the top of the line Crucial P5 Plus two terabyte kit and this thing comes with everything that we need. So inside the bag, we're gonna get the SSD itself, obviously, but we also get the Essential Electronics Toolkit and this guy. And this is a USB-C enclosure. Now the intention of this kit is you take your old SSD out and put it in here so that you can continue to use it as external storage. However, being able to plug in RSSD via USB means the whole upgrade process gets a lot easier. So first up, we're going to put our upgraded SSD in this enclosure. Next, we'll go into disk utility and you can see right here is our external two terabyte drive now. So if I go ahead and hit erase, we call this Macintosh HD and give it an APFS format. We'll go ahead and hit that. 
which will now turn this into effectively an external USB drive. With that done, we just click restore and this is gonna allow us to essentially clone the SSD that's built into this machine onto this external one before we even install it. Now, how long this process takes is gonna depend on how much stuff you have on your SSD and also how fast your external SSD is. So now we just sit back and wait as Disk Utility clones everything onto our new drive. All right, that was pretty quick here. It's about five minutes later and take a look at that. We are now booted off of our external two terabyte drive. Honestly, this is one of the things that makes Mac OS so great. You just can't do it this easily on Windows, bro. Now to perform this upgrade, I only needed two additional things that weren't in the iFixit kit. Number one, of course, is our thermal paste because obviously that's one of the upgrades. And number two is this guy. This is an NVMe SSD adapter for this generation of MacBook. It's super simple. It just takes the pins in our NVMe drive and makes it so that it fits in the inexplicably proprietary port that Apple uses in these machines. Don't ask me why they did it like that, but for $7, you fix the problem and use a normal SSD. So let's get into it. The iFixit kit includes the P5 screw bit, which we're gonna use to pop this bottom case off. And a pro tip, the lid of the iFixit kit is a screw tray, so you don't lose anything. And we are in, there's our SSD on the left. We're gonna switch out our P5 for a T5 and pop out the single screw that holds that in. Go ahead and unplug the SSD and then we can remove our new SSD from its housing and install it in the adapter and install the adapter in the board. Now, if all of this looks easy, that's because frankly it is. Upgrading the SSD on this generation of MacBook Pro is a no-brainer. But now it's time to move on to the thermal paste and unfortunately it is more than one single screw to do that. But fortunately this generation of MacBook Pro has a heat sink that faces you, which means you can unscrew it and take it off without removing the logic board. There's four screws each on the CPU and the GPU. On the CPU, we have these little bracket things, so make sure not to lose those. I'll also have a link to the detailed step-by-step -step guide from iFixit in the description below. And of course, don't forget this sneaky cheeky screw, which hides under a little rubber hat. And of course, don't lose the hat. And with that, the heatsink just comes off. Dude, these things are so easy to work on. Why aren't modern Macs like this? So now we can clean out the fins of the heatsink. These are actually pretty clean already and we'll wipe off the old thermal paste. Easy peasy. Now let's go ahead and apply our new thermal paste. I'm sure someone in the comments gonna yell at me for doing it wrong and tell me that I'm gonna blow up the entire MacBook, but I don't care. There goes the screw on the left, screw on the right, don't forget the hat. That's the GPU screws, and there's the CPU screws. This whole process is so easy. We went from half a terabyte to two terabytes and new thermal paste in literally six minutes. But the question is, were those six minutes worth it? How much faster is our new crucial storage and how much more effective is the new thermal paste? Well, to find out, we're gonna put the old SSD in a 15 inch MacBook Pro with identical specs and we're gonna be able to A-B test them live side by side. So there we have it, two seemingly identical Macs, but the one on the right has fresh thermal paste and a new SSD. So what does that do to its performance? Well, to find out, I fired up a 10 minute 4K 60 FPS Final Cut Pro timeline to see what they would both do. And surprisingly, our new machine completed the render in 34 minutes and 48 seconds compared to the stock machine's 3555. And when we switched over to do an export of that same timeline, thus giving the new SSD more of a role, the new machine did the render in an hour 21 minutes, whereas our stock machine was an hour 32. That's an impressive 10 minute difference, essentially just because this thing has a faster SSD. How much faster exactly? Well, it's quite a bit. I mean, the stock SSD is no slouch, but our new one is almost a gigabyte Per second faster. That's a big difference and that explains what we're seeing in Final Cut Pro. 
but it's kind of hard to isolate from that what role the repaste is playing. So to find that out, we fired up GFX Bench. Despite this being a 30 minute graphical test, there's not a real discernible difference in how these machines perform. In a few areas, our repasted machine outscores the base and vice versa. So very hard to draw a conclusion there. To try to find out a little bit more, I fired up Cinebench and ran it back to back three times. Despite our new machine scoring slightly higher at 3651 than our stock machine at 3560, after running three times, there's essentially nothing in it. It's 3615 to 3645. So it seems like our new thermal paste isn't giving us additional performance out of the chip, but maybe it's having the system run cooler? Well, not really. Watching the Intel Power Gadget over all three runs, they basically both fluctuate between 92 and 98 degrees Celsius. So as far as I'm able to tell from anything within measurable, much less noticeable difference, you're not gonna find it doing a repaste. And to be honest, I would almost prefer to keep it stock because the thermal paste that OEMs use is designed to last a really long time. So it might not be the best at cooling, but it will probably be the longest lasting, whereas this should get repasted in a year or two. So if you're doing this yourself, I would honestly skip the repaste, but the SSD is a big difference, especially if you're doing video editing or programming or anything that writes to the SSD a lot. Having an extra like 35% performance, that really is noticeable from day to day. And it's pretty crazy that this seven plus year old MacBook has a faster SSD than the brand new and non-upgradable M2 MacBooks in the base model. Ugh, slightly embarrassing there, but let me know if you're surprised by this result. I certainly expected more from the thermal paste, but the SSD, I mean, you gotta do it. Check out iFixit. I've got links to everything that we talked about in the description below. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.